Matt Damon, what do we owe the men and women who in real life went into wartime Europe and saved Europe's art from the Nazis? Wow, well, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that was, uh, it, it's incredible what they did really, and, and, and really humbling, humbling to, to, to hear the story and to try to portray one of these people, um, because they were, you know, they were older guys, they were middle-aged guys, they were in their 40s and their 50s, and <clears throat> I think the oldest guy was about 66. Um, so they had these really established lives and careers and families and, um, you know, they were curators, they were art professors and historians and they, and they put all of that, they kind of traded away all that comfort to, to, to serve their, their country and, and, and go and, and serve the world really and try to, you know, and risk their lives to protect these, these and, and save these pieces of art. I mean, did you know about this story? I mean, what is it, five million pieces of art looted? No, I, I, I can't believe that I didn't know this story, but I, I feel better you know, the more people I talk to because it's just not a story that's really known. And, and, um, and the fact that we've put together this special unit of, 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 you know, of people from 13 different countries who, who, who um, you know, really went, went to the front and, and, and risked everything to, to rescue this art just for all of our sakes. It's a pretty stunning ensemble performance. What did that feel like? Usually you're in a lead role, uh, topping it out with the bad guys. What did this feel like? Yeah, no, it's a lot easier. I've done it, I've experienced it with, uh, you know, o the, the Oceans movies and it, it's, <clears throat> the, real, the real heavy lifting goes to the director on movies like this. Um, it's, uh, you know, for us, we work a, f a few days a week, you know, the, the cast, we're, we're, you know, it, it feels like, uh, you know, all of that pressure is kind of spread out amongst all of us, and it's a much easier, uh, it's a much easier job. It's a lot of fun, actually. It is a movie about men past their prime. Uh, we don't want to give anything away, but the love interest in it is slight. And uh, is your audience really ready for that? I mean, they, they, some of the people used to seeing you in the action movies are saying, "Hold on a minute, what is this about?" Uh, yeah, I, I, I think people are, you know, it's the 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 kind of the, the little dalliance with, with Kate Blanchett and my characters uh, are, I think it's a kind of a sophisticated love story. And, um, you know, they, you know they, they relate to each other over the art, really. And, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't always, you don't always have to end with them tumbling into bed together. You know? What I mean, though, is that it's a movie about men with gray hair. I mean, in the movie, it's the first time I've ever seen you in a movie with gray hair. Uh, how did that feel? I mean, it, for, for someone whose reputation has, has been staked as a serious action movie person, what did it feel like? Uh, well, I mean, that's the story. I mean, the story yeah. is these, these gray-haired guys, you know, getting into the war. And, um, and you know, it's, it's fun to watch them try to go through, you know, to watch John Goodman go through basic training. And, <laughs> you know, that, that, that's, that's kind of, that's the movie. And, um, and I have gray hair, you know. I've, I have four kids now, and, and man, did my hair go gray quickly. It is, for those of us who also have gray hair, quite an affecting drama in that sense that it is about men who have done the main thing in their lives, and then suddenly they're called to war. Uh, just again, with the audience, um, some of the reviews have been, you know, okay, what's it about? I mean, what do you, what do you think the movie is about? What's it about? It's yeah. about, it's, it's quite simply about a group of people who decided that, that art was worth their lives, yeah. that, that, that saving art, it was, it was so important to our culture and to our survival as a species that it was worth risking, risking their lives for to go. And there is a subtle parallel, shall we say, in America today. This is a movie about um, rationalism, art, culture, sophistication against what the Nazis tried to do to it, which is right. shown quite, quite vividly. The teeth in the barrel, the gold teeth which yeah. you discover. There's a, there is a parallel, isn't there, with modern America? That you, sure, you, yeah, you, yeah. Listen, this is the, the, you know, the Monuments Men weren't in Baghdad. And, you know, and I mean, priceless cultural treasures were, were, were looted or lost or destroyed. and. Um, you know, and, and, and I couldn't read this story without thinking about that. Um, you know, art is always the first thing in, in the school budget that gets the axe. 
and you know when times are tough like they are now and uh, you know that th that's what that's what you see getting cut out of the public schools and and so I think it's a good time to have a conversation about what is the real role of, of art in, in, in our culture and in our, in our civilization. Um, yeah. Almost every movie you're, you make does get accused by sections of the American press of being politically motivated, socialist, communist. I mean, in other, in other words, this is, this is part of that, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, this is a, this is a great story that, that, that I couldn't believe we were the first people who got to tell this story. I mean. George said <clears throat> from the beginning that, that he said, look, the movies that Grant and I have made are, are more cynical than we are. And we're we want to make a movie that's just a feel-good, uplifting movie about these really heroic guys. And that's what they, what they set out to do. I mean, I draw those parallels just because I can't help it. Um, you know, but, but they set out to make a, an unabashedly patriotic movie, and I think they succeeded. Do you think the America that is depicted in that movie, though, exists today? I mean, it is riven by cultural warfare, isn't it? Well, look, yes, it, it is, but there's certainly a nostalgia for that. Um, and uh, I think that's why we keep returning to World War II. Um, and, and this movie in particular, George and Grant wanted it to feel like a movie that was made in the 1960s, that was, you know, absent the, you know, the cynicism that, that crept into our, our war films post, you know, 1970. Um, There's uh, no blood and guts, not much. Right. No torture, no gratuitous right, exactly. swearing and violence. And I've made those movies, <laughs> you know, I've, I've made those too. Um, but, uh, but no, in this one, it's a, it's, it feels like an old-fashioned uh, an, an old picture. But why did he want to do that? Why did you want to be part of that? Well, I, I just thought the script was excellent, and it was, you know, kind of a formally rigorous exercise, and 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 I was all for it, um, you know, and and I get it, and you know, we, we don't have to make the same movie over and over, and, and we shouldn't, and um, I tr I try to never do that, and and this one was, um, you know, I saw what George was going for, and I thought it was a terrific idea, so I, I jumped on. You just come back from, I think, Davos, where you were given a uh, an award for your work in bringing uh, water to poverty-stricken people in the global south. Um, I mean, how did that feel at Davos? Did, did, had any of them seen Elysium? Did they get it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think they all live on Elysium. I don't know if they saw <laughs> exactly. the movie. Exactly. That's yeah. what Elysium's yeah. about, isn't it? Of course. I mean, but how did it feel for you as somebody that had been outspoken on all these political issues to be among the 1% there? Well, it was good. It was good to be able to, I mean, usually when they talk about water and, you know, the panels I was on and the, and the discussions I, I, I listened to, um, they tend to talk about water in terms of security and, and you know, their, their supply chains and things like that. And so, you know, for us, we were just trying to get kind of access on the, on the menu and, 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 uh, and make sure that the 800 million people who don't have access to, to clean water are, are not forgotten. And, and so, so, so I was grateful for the opportunity to go speak there. Do you think you got anywhere, though? I don't know. I mean, uh, hopefully, hopefully, you know, the, the, we we were a kind of water.org was a presence there, and people know who we are and won't slam the door in our face if we come calling. And and uh, but we'll see. You've been politically outspoken on, including the education system. You mentioned you know, the the public education in America on President Obama's record. You supported him. I mean, do you ever feel like? I know you've been asked this many times before, just piling into politics yourself, that it needs somebody with a bit of heart and communications to do it. I think we have somebody with heart and communications in the White House right now. Um, you know, even, even though I've disagreed with him about things, I, um, you know, I, I'm humbled by how difficult that job is. And, uh, and, and the short answer is no, I'm not going to go into politics. I, I um, you know, I, I, I love what I do and, and, and I'm able to I'm able to throw rocks from the sidelines. Yeah, but you're um, throwing quite big ones, aren't you? Yeah, sometimes, and uh, and hopefully hopefully they can, it can move the needle. You know, certainly something like you know Water.org, which I spend most of my time on. You know, that's not a partisan issue, and and that actually feels nice to kind of be removed from you know that uh, because you know they're, they're you know the fist fighting in America over you know. Oh, you know, between left and right is, is you know, it can become, uh, you know, it, it and you are part tiresome. of it. Let's be, let's be honest. You are part of that fist fighting. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I have, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm unabashedly liberal, and I have those opinions that, 
you know, for instance, something like health care, you know, I, I got, I had a discussion with a Republican friend of mine a few years ago, and, and he said, oh, I understand the problem. He said, you see health care as a right, and I see it as a privilege. And I said, yeah, that's exactly right. That's an irresolvable, we, we can't resolve that. If you see health care as a privilege, then my question to you is how do the, the, the tens of millions of children earn that privilege? What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, so there's, there, there are places where there is a chasm that, that feels unbridgeable. Um, I, think, I think Obama has worked tirelessly to try to bridge that, the, the that side, chasm. But the, in and general, he's, don't. Do he's they? dealt with a historic intransigence. That he, there's no question about that. I mean, I, I think like, like well, worse than Lincoln dealt with. So, um, well, Lincoln dealt with an intransigence that led to armed conflict in your yeah. country. I mean, are you really comparing it to that? Uh, no, I don't think we're going to go back to a civil war. I don't but think that would happen. But there is a war of words. There's a, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, when you're dealing with people who are willing to just shut down the government for, for their beliefs, then, then, then yes, it's, it's, it, it, it starts to feel like there's a, you know, an impasse that we're going to need to figure out some way around. So where do you go? Where does the country go? And I was going to ask you, what are the limits to what Hollywood can do? I mean, you, you, you've, you've made your contribution, but... How much more can you do than go on making films that are put, committed and no? There's only so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only so much making movies is going to solve. I mean, I think I think it's about it's about elections. It's about you know they're going to have to lose some elections, and 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 when that happens, then they'll come around. The the, the demographics aren't aren't with them. No. And uh, and and that will become clear eventually to them. I, th will, I think that's my opinion. You will know, I have reported, you will you have had the experience uh, of how powerless people on the American right can feel. The little guy, the ordinary guy in the Midwestern town who feels the world is against him. Is there nothing, in, in, the, in other words, that your side of politics can do to reach out to people like that? The, the angry people of America. To my mind, our side of politics is, is them. And they've been, they've been sold something from the other side. And, uh, you know, the, the left is always about empowering the middle class and building the middle class. That's always where they come from. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, the right is always about the corporate interests and that's where they come from and that's their, that's their opinion about how to strengthen things. And, and the little guy you're talking about in the Midwest is much more aligned with the left than the right, whether they realize it or not. Matt Damon, you said, uh in the movie, the, the gray hair is real. Where, what next for you? Uh, obviously you have writing credits, you have a, a writing, you know, screenwriting academy award. What next for you in your career after this movie? Uh, I haven't worked since this movie, so I'm, uh, and I just, I'm looking for a good job. I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a weird time in Hollywood. The uh, piracy is a huge deal. I mean, it's, 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 it's eaten into like 40% of our, uh, kind of market share so um, so there are different jobs coming becoming available it's like a lot of comic book stuff and very little um, very little of the movies that I really like to make so so I'm 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 on a hiatus right now. Maybe you should I've, come to Europe where it's all state funded and we have tax breaks for art movies. Listen, I've, I've worked here a lot. I'll, I'll go anywhere, wherever I, I follow the, the, the you know the directors and the uh, and the roles that are available and um, yeah, I'd love, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something good, but I'm, I'm holding out for something good. Matt Damon, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. <laughs> All right, cheers. Cheers.